Hi, welcome to educators.com. This is Shravanti, your Hadoop instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss about why to use the tool runner and how to implement the tool runner and the program execution with the tool runner. Why tool runner? In all our previous programs, in the driver class, we used to create a job object and then we used to implement this uh, call our mapper class, reducer class, and also setting up the input data type and the output key as a key value data type, everything in the driver class in the main, main method itself. In case, let's assume that if I wanted to change the parameters of my number of reducers, or not only this, in case the case sensitivity is there, I wanted to change that as well. So any of the parameters if you wanted to change, you have to update your driver class code and then you have to export that into the jar files and rebuild the code and redeploy them to the application. Whatever the small parameter change you have to do, you have to follow the rebuilding and redeploying the entire thing. If you avoid that, with the help of the tool runner, what we can do is we can change the parameters on the fly, such as number of reducer tasks, or if you wanted to change the number of mapper tasks, our case sensitivity, or n number of the parameters, we can pass it with the help of the hyphen d parameter via the command line. So, with the help of this tool runner, it makes our code more portable because we are not hard coding any of these specific parameters. So how to implement the tool runner? To implement the tool runner in your program must be to expand the configured class and implement the tool, tool interface. And here we will be using the tool runner dot run. That we will be specifying which class we are going to call. If you observe this earlier in other programs, in the main method itself, we used to write entire driver code. That is creating the job object, configuration object, setting up the mappers, reducers, and everything in the main method. But when you wanted to implement the tool runner, in that case, in the main method, we just need to call the run method. You can see here tool runner dot run. So, in the program, what we need to do is in this particular word count tool runner class, we need to write the entire code, but that code has to be under your run method. You have to override this particular run method. The rest of the code, like creating the job objects, configuration objects, and mapper class, and user class, this does not change at all. To show you that, let me log into the Cloudera Quick Start VM and create a class and show you the execution. I have just logged into my Cloudera Quick Start VM and double click on that Eclipse. It opens here. The previous program, work on mapper, reducer, everything is there. So here, to implement this tool runner, we are not touching anything on the mapper and the reducer or combine or anything else. But we are just creating a separate driver class. So you can just go here and create a class over here. Create new class. Word count with tool runner. You can just specify a name of the class and the code whatever I have attached to the video, you can just take that code and copy that code into this. And here if you observe, as I mentioned you that the first and foremost thing is your class needs to be a configured class and implement the tool interface. And also if you see this main method in the main method, you are just calling your run method, tool runner dot run. So when this statement executes, so it looks out for this run. So here we must need to override the run method because we have implemented the tool interface. So for that we need to override this particular run method. And whatever the code inside is there, like creating a configuration object and creating a mapper class, the user class, setting up the output key class, value class, everything is same. You are not even modifying any of your code. So here, 
as I mentioned, a few things you need to remember is extending the configured class and implement the tool interface. And uh, just call that run method with the help of the tool runner dot run. And whatever the code we are writing, like creating the configuration objects, the setting up the mapper class, the user class, and all this stuff must need to be as part of your run method. You must need to override this particular run method. The rest of the code, like mapper and the end user, are not even touching. You can keep the same code and just save this particular class and export that into the jar file. If you observe in this, I have not specified any of the number of ready user class. In case if you wanted to pass it here, with the help of the job dot set number of ready user class, you can pass it. Otherwise, now how we are passing is with the help of the hyphen d parameter, we are going to pass. Tool runner examples dot jar. I'm taking into the jar file. And here, Hadoop jar. You can see it here, Hadoop jar. This is the jar file name and this is the driver class name. And now, this is the new thing which we are seeing. It's hyphen d map is dot job dot reduce is, is equal to 2. That is nothing more. This is just a parameter to specify the number of reduce that are. With the help of the map reduce dot job dot reduce this, you can uh, set the number of, I mean, you can set the number of reduce that And this is just an input file and this is just my output. My word count. You know, output one or whatever you can just keep it. The sample one is nothing but it is just a hello world program. Let's execute that program. So, what it does is the execution of the mapper reducer doesn't change at all. The only thing is it just takes this particular parameter with the help of the hyphen D and it sets the number of reducer tasks to two so that in the output you can see the two files. One is the path hyphen R hyphen 0000. zero, zero, zero and Another one is a part hyphen R I T four zero seven one. Those are the two files like based on the number of ready user tasks which you are specifying it here, those many output files get generated. So without writing the tool runner, you cannot pass this particular dynamic parameters. And also similar way if you wanted to set the case sensitivity. So there is a parameter called case hyphen sensitive is equal to false and true. You can just pass that parameter as well. There are a number of the parameters. Either you can pass it from the driver class or the best way is to implement the tool runner and then pass it via the command line. So as the program is executed, you can see the output with the two different files. Yes, program execution is done. Uh, let me just give the Hadoop FS hyphen LS. I can see, we have to see your two files because the ready user task, we have given it as a two. See here guys, you are able to see the two files. If you don't pass the hyphen D, you would have seen only one file because by default the ready user task is, uh, the value of the ready user task is one itself. You can just display the content, whatever the content is. Inside that. This is how, with the help of the tool runner, you can pass the parameter dynamically. You can see the content of these files. Like, as it is a word count, Hadoop is repeated twice. So, it is just showing that has a Hadoop comma two. The rest of the things will be coming here. That is, internally, it uses these uh, hash partitioner and it makes sure that uh, your keys will be distributed across this particular two different reducers. So this, some of the things here, some of the things here, like this. So summary, in this module we have discussed how to pass the parameters on the fly with the help of the tool runner and how to implement the tool runner with the help of uh, extending the tool interface and uh, overriding that particular run method. And we have seen how to change the number of ready user tasks via the command line dynamically. And also, you can check the case sensitivities, you can change the job names, and a lot of parameters you can pass it. Thank you. Let's catch up in the next module.